lived within a few minutes of this house. All these men were farmers. They were all men deeply concerned with the problems facing their people at the turn of the century. They were missionary educated and devout Christians. They drew their ideals, their aspirations from two overlapping worlds. They supported Saul Prakey in his life's work both financially and as colleagues and friends. Blackie was a constant beloved visitor to all their homes. Behind these men were women with strong values and beliefs, a deep sense of commitment and profound courage. In 1913, the women of the Orange Free State were heroically protesting against the carrying of passes by women. Within a hundred mile radius of Tabancho, thousands of ordinary women were refusing to carry passes and for that they were imprisoned and brutally treated. September 12, 1913, that thousands of my people gathered to meet Mr. Dawa, the Secretary of Native Affairs. Sol Plaki wrote, Tabanchu Hill, visible for scores of miles in every direction, towered high above the surrounding landscape. Its stony slopes stood like a silent witness to the outrage treaty between the Barolong and the Boers. The Reverend J.D. Horonyani said to Mr. Dawa, All the people you see before you are frightened by the new law. They have come here to hear how they are expected to live under it. Dawa explained that the principle of the act was the first step towards territorial segregation. He advised them of three alternatives. To become servants, move into the reserve, dispose of their stock for cash. Let them not think that there was a desire to oppress. The cause of agitation will not help you. Remove suspicions and mistrust from your minds. The disappointment under which the meeting broke up was indescribable. My grandfather was interpreter at that meeting. I can imagine his anguish while translating this way. Within two months of this meeting, the Secretary for Lands wrote to the Registrar of Deeds, Bloemfontein. I have the honor to inform you that the Native Land Commission has requested a map of the Orange Free State to be prepared with as little delay as possible, showing in Alia all lands registered in the names of individual natives. The Registrar of Deeds, Bloemfontein, to the Surveyor General, 4th November, 1913. Here with the list of farms owned by natives in the Tabanshu district, so far as I can ascertain from their names to what race the owners belong. Where a native has adopted a European name, it would of course be impossible to find out from my records that he is not of European descent. This monument commemorates the arrival of the four trekkers in Tabanshu, where they made a peace treaty with Chief Morocco. In 1943, Chief Morocco's grandson said to the acting Prime Minister, Dr. J. H. Hoffmeyer, In your speech, you say we must love our land. We love it. And we shall always do so. We only hope it will be made possible by the rulers of this country that we may have some land to love. 114 years ago, Ellen's grandfather, Jeremiah Makoti, taught at a school for both black and white children. Dr. J.S. Moroka's mother was one of his pupils. 
you are now 93 years of age, isn't it so? Okay. Are you aware that now I'm on my 69th birthday <laughs> now? <laughs> we are still a child. Uh, absolutely, a child. that's right. Uh, I uh, want to hit 100. You want to hit 100? Mm. Lovely. I made up my mind. I think everybody in Tabancho has always looked upon you as not only a great doctor, but a great teacher. And I remember my mother took very ill. Yes. You were treating my mother I and knew. she had yes. she had heart trouble. Yes. And she died. You said to me, Mutalipule, mm. learn to cry. Yes. Because if you cry, then you <coughs> take out everything that is said in you. You well, attended school at yes, Tabancho. From here I went to Lovedale. After finishing in Edinburgh, I went to Germany. Just to make to show that I will not disappoint my people. When I came here uh, as an MBCHB of Edinburgh University, I opened the surgery. For some little time, I saw only the Africans. But in time, all the people in, in South Africa came to me. So Craig was a fine chap. He was a man who loved justice. He wanted justice for everybody. He was a man who was out to help his people. And he tried it in a way that I appreciated. So that the whole of us, the black man and the white man, can live in this country peacefully. And that is what is wanted up to this present day. He gave us encouragement. He said, man, you must not give in. This is your country. If you die, die for it. They are the children of this land. And they want to have the same power as anybody else. Is Trevor ever getting up? Never in a month of Sundays. Never in a month of Sundays. Still there's one thing they won't miss out on in a month, in a month of Sundays. Cause Vista Brown sees a Dickens with a stir. No wonder it's the one that they prefer. You never put the R in gravy without Vista. Cause you can't beat Vista in a month of Sundays. The M&B Furnishing Amazing Saving Sale is now on. Come on in and give us a word. Amazing saving on modern and traditional suites with a wide choice to suit your style and your pocket from 299 to 899 pounds. Amazing saving on carpets with immediate delivery from a massive 4,000 rolls in stock and on a wide range of dining and bedroom suites. M&B, our buying power covers the Midlands. M&B, you can't afford not to give us a word. If you're into sounds, get into Sound Shop at Boots, where the legends live. The legend of Elton John, classic albums and cassettes, and at 449, breaking hearts won't break the bank in Sound Shop at Boots. John, you got into the legends at Sound Shop. Bickerton. 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 Go bag a Bickerton. rough on soft, delicate skin, so a kind way to care for it is a simple way. No perfume, no colouring, just the purest ingredients make it safe, even for sensitive skin. The answer, the answer Deep in the heart of the West Country, at the turn of the century, lived Herbert Hill Brain, purveyor of quality meats. And when Herbert Hill said quality, he meant quality. 
That would have been fame enough for any man. But in 1925, Herbert Hill Brain surpassed himself, creating the tasty meat dish of pork, liver and onions, traditionally served with a rich West Country sauce, to which he gave his name, Brains Faggots. We think he'd have liked the changes we've made. Brains Faggots, so tasty, you'll wish you'd tried them years ago. Aunt Blanche started as a qualified teacher and then worked for many years as a midwife and finally became a farmer. My brother had no will. And he, he had a, a piece of land just below my mine, where the graves are. And then I went to the office to go and report him. And then they told me that I was not supposed to get that land because I'm a woman. Only the Makotis must inherit. I told them that I'm a Makoti by birth. And Peter is my brother. So if that be the case that women do not inherit their properties from the parents, from the uh, parents, when they are married, then you must give me a pair of trousers. I will wear it and then be a man, and then I will inherit it. And then we went on further discussion, and then I went, I won the case, and then I got the title for it. Yes, we have no banana. We have no bananas today. Well, of course, we got the cheese, and onion, tomato, and all kinds of fruit to sell. We have an old fashioned tomato, a nice Jesse potato, but yes, we have no bananas. We have no bananas today. I never could understand this plant because you know, first the fruit shop on us to stand by a Greek. I didn't even know what a Greek was. And sometimes when you, you taught us nice Jersey potato, when you talked about Jersey potato, we always thought of, we thought the potatoes were putting on Jersey. Jesus. Because nobody but nobody interpreted this to us. <laughs> Kirunelisiwa <laughs> Blanche Tsimatsima's farm, Sehokwane's Valley, owned by her family for generations, was declared a black spot and stripped from her in 1974. I'm born on my farm. My mother was born on a farm. And my grandparents were farmers. Both sides. They were good farmers. They were good farmers. The whole farm of Tavafata was more than 2,000 Morgan. And each child was given 600 Morgan. This was going to be my dwelling house. Of course, this is the last building I did. I got the men to break the stones and dress them. The stones are lower down on this very far. 
The whole wall was complete. I was about to put up the, the roof. It's then when we were told to go. I was sad. But of course I received a letter from the government that this was proclaimed as a white area. I just kept quiet. I didn't do anything. I until the rules another one. My, one of my European friends came to me and said, it's already decided that we should go. We received a letter from the government uh, uh, to tell us uh, how much he, he was going to give us. It was 48 rents for a, for a Morgan. I, I received and then he gave, gave us double the amount. Of course, one day he just uh, came to the farm to tell my people not to plow because he's going to buy a farm. And then I was in Tabancho. And then when I came to the farm, the people told me that uh, this uh, white man across the river who was, tell, who, was told, who was telling them not to plow. And then I said, you must go on plowing. He has not bought the farm yet. He said, you are not going to, to reap this crop. I said, I'm going to reap the crop because I plowed before you bought. I succeeded because I got the people to reap everything and removed it to, to, to the farm I had already bought. Truly speaking, he was, he was not a nice man. I was trying to show him where the beacons were he became moody. He said he has never heard uh, any way, it's a, it's a strange thing and it's a miracle for a, uh, for a black man, to, for, for, for a black woman to own a farm. They must explain to him where, he, where that woman got the farm from. I said, you can go and ask my parents, where they could to come from. He died instantly before he could get into that big house where he It said, it said, I don't want even to come here. I've never been here, I'm coming for the first time. It makes me, it doesn't make me angry, it makes me sad. Of course, when one is said, you can be angry. You are tired? Mm. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> Only the knees are tired. I'm so... I'm so... I'm so... I'm so... What a waste. What a waste. Mad. I'm going to get a bit of a kick at you. One says those stones that she bought. They cost me a lot of money. But just because I wanted a decent home, I spent on them. Because I was just getting ready to put up this house and be completely comfortable. They didn't want my comfort. <laughs> I remember the time when black and white farmers lived as neighbors, helping each other in times of need. There was strong trust and respect in those days. One of my grandfather's closest friends was a white man called Mr. Warringham. Blanche to this day talks about Mr. Warringham, his love and care for her after her parents' death. Mrs. Parkin 
aged eight to seven years. She and Blanche are very old friends and live within walking distance of each other. So Blackie was very sympathetic towards the black people. I was just a young little girl, but I saw him with both my eyes. As a little girl, I went to Mrs. Paggy's Band of Hope class, where we were taught not to drink. And I remember very well some of the hymns that were taught there. One of them was, Mantri mantle abanyana banuha nambujala urunga ngo mota beno baruha nambujali hanalore halubonge halichole nyaya. The objectives of this great organization was that, Band of Hope, was that we should not drink liquor. In 1976, I was already living in Soweto. I find it very symbolic that one of the, the institutions that the children destroyed in Soweto during that year were the beer halls. They pulled them down and in fact they went further than that and they told their parents that their parents must stop drinking. And they said, look, this thing is destroying our nation. Please stop drinking liquor. <laughs> Reverend Rudolph, Reverend 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 Although the missionaries gave us education, they often came with a feeling of superiority and their own prejudices of what was worthwhile and what was to be discarded. They stopped many of our traditional practices. Our beautiful bitter dresses were considered heathen together with the dances and some of our songs. There is a very strong kinship amongst black people which binds communities together during both sad and joyful events. The neighborhood has come together in jubilation. This party is in honor of Poe Lindri, one of Blanche's grandsons who has just graduated. The preparations for this party have been going on for a week. Blanche has repeatedly said, at the age of 83 years, she may never have another opportunity to celebrate an occasion of this nature. Oh, <laughs> 